Hey, what's up everybody? This is your boy Kenny, and this is If Loving You Was Wrong, Season 4, Episode 3, and the name of this episode is In Distress. Um, before I um, start, off, start off with this review, let me offer my love and condolences, especially to the people that were affected by the shootings in Las Vegas. You know, this was a, a serious, tragic event, um, and I am deeply not only saddened, but also, you know, I extend, you know, my love and condolences to everyone that was hurt that night, as well as everyone that was affected by Hurricane Irma, Hurricane Harvey, and I'm um, Hurricane Jose. You know, if you can give relief and give, you know, help to, 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 you know, to these people who were affected by these situations, please do so. I mean, this world is definitely having some serious tragedies lately, and we definitely need to come together and actually, you know, help mend each other through these hard times that we're living in. Now, on with this review. Uh, the episode opens up where it left off. Um, we saw that Justice has confessed to killing Ramsey, that he stabbed him in the bathroom of, you know, the house, of, of Natalie's house, and, uh, and that he stabbed him in the shower. Now, Natalie is listening to this, and she's like, how could you have done this? He was a grown man. You were a little boy. He's like, well, I did it, you know. I'm telling you right now, I killed him. So, can you call the cops and let them know I did it so they can bring my mom home? And I'm just like, it is so, so obvious that he's being fed this information. And who would know this information other than the person who was there? Because Kelly didn't even know all of that. But, obviously, he, he knew about, you know, him. He said that I took a knife from... I took a knife from um, from my mother's, um, you know, from from my mom's um, kitchen, and um, and I went over there and I killed Ramsey. So now that I confess to it, can she? Can you call the cops and have them release my mom? And I, I'm just like, wow, it's so obvious. Travis has now got his hooks in in justice, and Natalie is like stunned. I mean, we even saw that she even removed the knives from her kitchen. Like, I'll be damned, you're going to fucking stab me up in my shit. So, she got her knives and, you know, put them up. And she literally sat there and watched him, like, like pretty much in, like, shock. Like, I can't believe this boy done told me this. Um, so, we actually see afterwards, she calls Lucian and tells Lucian that, you know, you need to hurry up. You know, and he's saying that, look, I can't talk right now, but then... You know, they get off the phone, but we see that, yeah, Kelly and Natalie ain't playing. But it's obvious that, yeah, um, Justice is definitely being coerced to say that he killed Ramsey, and the only person who can coerce him is the actual killer. So we got that out. Next, we get a scene with Lieutenant Stevens and Lucian. Um, you know, he asked about, you know, what was the name of that law firm that helped us with the Reynolds case. And he said um, it was um, um, Connolly, Ross, and Glenn. So he's like, okay, well, I need to call. And, he's, and like, and like Lieutenant Stevens is like, well, who you need to call for? And he says, I'm calling for Kelly. Kelly is innocent and she needs representation. He's like, well, and then, Lu and then like Lieutenant Stevens, being the sneaky asshole that he is, says that, well, I don't see how. I mean, all the evidence points to her. I mean, the, you know, the the letter, the the, the hairbrush, uh, you know, the knife, the her her pin from her job. I mean, everything points to her. I mean, how you think she's gonna pull herself out of that? I mean, it seems like an open and shut case. And I'm like, see, that's what lets me know right there. Lieutenant Stevens is a piece of shit, and I think he's definitely one of those crooked FBI agents who likes to bend and mold things to get his way. And I think that's what he's... Because, you know, he's kind of playing both Lucian, Lucian and Eddie against each other. And I'm just like, yeah. L um, Lieutenant Stevens is not to be trusted. And even to this moment, I'm, I'm, I'm even more... I'm, it's like more and more I'm starting to realize that, you know, Lieutenant, like, um, Lieutenant Stevens is no good. Alright, so we got that out the way. 
So we see that, um, and then what we, what ends up happening is that Lucian actually calls and he talks to Ian. So Ian's last name is Glenn. And, and you know, he's one of the partners, you know, um, and I think um, Larry's last name is Ross and then there's another guy. So he's one of the partners of the firm, so he finally talks to Ian and he pretty much talks to him about Kelly's case because um, Lucian had actually helped him solve, you know, do some work you know, for a case previously, and he says, I really thank you so much for your work, and I did promise you that if you needed me, I got you, so what do you need me to do, and he says, I need you to represent my friend Kelly, she's innocent, you know, um, and he says, okay, well, I'll come down and meet her in the morning, he's like, well, the thing is, you need to meet her right now, because her kid right now is at my house, and he's frantic, and he's just, you know, he's not taking the situation very well. So he's like, okay, fine, well, um, I'll come now. And then he also told, then he also asked who was the DA who was um, interrogating her, and, she, and he said her name was Jan. And we also found out from um, the last episode that she also goes to Travis's church. So she's one of the church minions that, you know, that um, Travis has run around doing his dirty deeds. So he says, so pretty much um, Ian says he's going to dig into it and he's going to be right down. Then we get a scene with Esperanza and Lucian. She asks about Kelly um, and she says that, okay, uh, you know, so far everything's all right. And and then he also says, you know, I really want to get a copy of that 911 tape, you know, where, it, it, where, sh where it's supposed to be Ramsey implicating Kelly. But he says that for some odd reason it just doesn't seem right or whatever. You know, something just ain't adding up with me. And, you know, Esperanza's like, okay, fine, you know, if I know it, or if I know or hear anything, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll definitely, you know, you know, I'll, I'll definitely let you know about it. But then he also lets her know that Eddie's there and that Eddie has been arrested by the FBI. So... So he's asking her, like, you know, well, you know, we caught him on everything. We we got him. And she's like, you caught him on what? She's like, well, you know all the stuff he's done. She's like, look, I know some things he's done. I don't know everything he's done. And we and you're right, she doesn't, you know, because she's completely naive to a lot of what Eddie's done. But then again, she's drawn to the bad boy because, you know, she, she like, you know, she was messing around with Eddie. And then she started messing around with Julius. And, you know, both of those motherfuckers are crazy. So she definitely got a she got a thing for crazy bad boys. So um, but um, but then he asked her about you know after he had left Cincinnati he went away for three years. Did you know anything about his whereabouts at that time? And she says, Oh no, I didn't. I, I didn't know him then. I, I didn't start talking to him till after that three years. So, but she says that you might need to talk to a friend of his named Jonathan. He goes by Chaos. He'll probably let you know what you need to know about that. So. She actually decides to go in and actually talk. Um, she actually decides to go in and actually talk um, to Eddie. And Eddie is still giving straight up asshole. <laughs> like, he is just, you know, and she's pretty much kind of letting me know, letting him know, like, you know what? You are disgusting. Like, they got you, Ed. They have a mountain of evidence against you, and you will never touch this ever again. And, she's, and he's like, girl, please, you say that every time and then or somehow on the late night it ends up sliding up in you anyway. So, that's old news. And I'm just like, Eddie is just such a cocky asshole. And still in this moment, you know, she's trying to get him like, look, you just need to confess, you know, for the sake of our daughter. You you don't need to be in jail. You know, I'm trying to keep the peace because you're, my, you're, the, you're the father of my child. And he's like, man, if anything... You need to be a better parent. And she's like, excuse me? I need to be a better parent? I'm not the one in here in jail. And she's like, well, I'm thinking about my daughter. You need to be thinking about her right now. You need to go home and be taking care of our child. And, sh and she's like, excuse me? Like, you the one in jail doing all this fucked up shit, robbing drug dealers and doing all this Like, What the fuck you know about that, huh, Esperanza? What do you know about me robbing drug dealers? Wh like, wh where are you getting all this from? Who's feeding you all this? 
like, oh, and she's like, well, Lucian told me that the FBI, she's like, oh, Lucian is FBI. Lucian and Stevens are FBI, so he be, so now he done got you up in here trying to get something out of me. You ain't going to get nothing out of me. And I'm just like, Effie is just so keen on taking down Lucian. He don't give a damn. And he already has it in his mind. He's going to get out. And there's nothing no one's going to do to stop him. So that's pretty much where he is in his mind. And um, so we see that go on. Yes, and I'm and um, I'm actually going to talk about the scene involving you know Alex and Brad and everybody else later on. I'm a, I'm actually going to end them with that one. Then we actually see that um, Ian finally comes to the um, comes to the precinct. Um, he's saying that look, we can try to get Kelly Bell. You know, he asks her where she is, um, and then he says that are you sure they won't because he says that right now they are searching her house because they have a search warrant on it. Like, do, are you sure there's nothing that's going to come back that's going to pretty much backfire anything we're trying to do? And he's like, oh, no, I'm good. You know, she's great. You know, I trust her. I know her. This girl ain't did nothing wrong. You know, we got this in the bag. Like, don't even worry about it. He's like, okay, I hope you're right. So he goes in there and he starts to um, interrogate. He starts to ask Kelly questions and he was like, you know... He, and he asked her, like, what did you tell the DA? And she was saying that, well, she was asking questions like, was I jealous? She started asking questions about the knife and did I kill him? And all of this bullshit. And she's like, I, I, I pretty much told her I didn't do anything. Well, actually, Kelly, you told her a little bit too damn much when you should have kept your mouth shut. You, you opened up too much. You talked about, you know, you... Um, you never been in his house and you never been in his bathroom, which made her think, oh, how you know he was found in the bathroom and all this crap. So Kelly, you know, being an idiot, did too much talking. And, girl, you work for the bank. You should know when to have legal representation and to let them, you know, sort out the situation versus you talking and giving her more than she needed. Because right now that DA believes you're guilty. And she's going to use all that evidence and all the stuff that's been plotted against you to take you down. But he's saying that, okay, um, I'm, he's saying that, look, you know, I'm definitely going to wait on get. I'm definitely working on getting you bail. And if you want, I can arrange for your son to come here to visit you. He's like, oh, no, I don't want my son up in here. I want to go home and see him. That's what I want to do. He's like, look, well, there's going to be some time with that because they asked for a search warrant for your house. Now, if that search warrant clears up, we can probably talk about posting your bell, but you need to be patient. And, and, and like, she's kind of stressing, like, like, oh, my God, I'm going to lose my job and all that. I'm like, yeah, you're going to probably lose your job based off all them charges and that, you're, that you're, all of your accounts are matched out. Like, you need to keep a good account if you're going to work for a bank. Which, if anything, that's kind of weird because normally they kind of put, like, you know, conditions on accounts to make sure that they don't overdraft like that. Like, so, so yeah. But and then again, I, 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 I still say that Miss Diane is behind that one. That one is not Travis. Because Kelly definitely got more than one enemy that she's dealing with. So, we see that Ian is there with Kelly and he pretty much asks her about, you know, what what's going on. Let's see here. Okay, now I got it. Now, the first thing we see is that, um, uh, we actually see that, um, um, pretty much, um, Alex and Brad have slept together, and he's at the house. He gets a call, and it's from Marcy. Marcy has a flat tire, and she's stranded, and, you know, if anything, you know, Brad is like, come on, like, I don't got time for the BS. I mean, do you really have a flat tire? She's like, yes, my tire is actually flat. But let's be real, Marcy did that shit on purpose. She intentionally flat her tire, knowing that it was going to get him out of bed with Alex. 
and Alex knows it because as soon as he on because you, while he's on the phone talking to Marcy, you see Alex is there just her face is all turned up and she's just in her feelings, and I'm like, sweetie, um, do we do we did 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 we forget that you caused all this bullshit when you decided to sleep around with Randall, and then not only that you had a baby by him. And then you're even causing more shit because now you got this mother, you got this stupid, simple motherfucker thinking that um, that um, Lucian is the father of the baby. So now he's crazy and is just doing everything he can to, to, to just drive you up the wall. But you all feeling your feelings about about um, Marcy because her mission is that she wants Brad back, and she's jealous that Marcy's getting the attention. She's like. Well, I I do just never think that you will be because because Brad Brad was like okay, I come there to help you with your car and that's it. So Brad decides to go help her with her car, and Alice is in her feelings like I would never thought you would ever leave our bed to go go out and help her. Yeah, and he didn't think he was gonna be leaving your bed to go out in the shed to get to get beat down. By by Randall, aka Psycho Betty's, you know, sexual madness. But you did it. Look, I have no remorse for Alice whatsoever. Like Alice, Alice can, Alice can go kick rocks as far as I'm concerned. Because at the end of the day, you're trying to act like, you know, everything's gonna go back to the way it was. He's willing to forgive you, but it's steps, and he lets her know this. You need to be patient. You need to forget that you caused a bunch of crap. Yes, I've forgiven you, but I have not forgotten. And you can't make me forget like things didn't happen. So, he says that he's going to go and check on Marcy. As soon as he opens that door, you know this fool, Randall, a.k.a. AKA Psycho Betty, has a little um, device, you know, geared towards her house. So, every time the door opens his buzzer goes off and that's when he comes out to start harassing them. And then all of a sudden he comes out, he's like, oh wow, Brad, that was quick. You done already? Seriously? Like, you, like, you really think she was satisfied with that? And he, and like, Brad was like, oh, I know she was satisfied. You know, and if anything, you should know because, um, Marcy was satisfied as well. And I was like, okay, Brad, throw it back at his sorry ass. And then he's like, oh, oh, really? Huh, she's a thinker. I'm like, yeah. And, you know, she does a lot of thinking. And sadly, she ain't been thinking about your crazy ass. So so then he's like, um, you know, and so so it's like, so he's like, oh, so you really think she's satisfied, huh? And then Brad's like, yes, I know she's satisfied. It's like, it's kind of funny that you say that because normally in order for her to be satisfied, she needs something you know, more bigger and longer, if you know what I mean. And he was like, yeah. And if anything, you know, I know what Marcy likes. And I also have um, a video of, um, of us having sex in your, in your bed. And he's like, oh, really? He's like, yeah. Boop, boop, boop. Just sent it to you. Have a good night. <laughs> Keep on messing with Brad. Keep on messing with Brad Psycho Betty, and I hope he's sending you into oblivion with your stupid ass. Time you turn around, he's doing some bullshit. So finally, um, so finally, uh, you know, uh, so finally Brad leaves. Then Psycho Betty starts even more shit. He starts turning on some music, blasting the music late at night. There's kids who are in bed trying to go to sleep for school. This fool is outside blasting his music to the point that, you know, Alice had to put down the baby and went outside and was like, what are you, and he's like, come on, let's play a game called Who's the Daddy? I'm, I'm just sitting here thinking, like, Randall needs to really be put in a padded room somewhere because this fool has definitely lost it. Then he's like, oh, come on, is my music too loud? Oh, because you're a hoe, your mom's a hoe, your dad's dead, and he's a piece of shit, and your brother's a hoe too, and your sister's a hoe, and I'm just like, what are you doing? You crazy motherfucker. So we see that Alex finally calls Lucian and tells Lucian that he's uh, that he's harassing her and all of that, and Lucian pretty much lets 
uh, Alex know, you need to stop letting that fool think that that child is mine. And he's like, yeah, I know, I know, I'm sorry about all that. So he's like, so what do you want? He's like, look, he's over here blasting music. He's been harassing us, and I like for it to stop. So Lucian finally comes over. You know, Randall, aka Psycho Betty, is being all kind of disrespectful. He's telling him to turn your music down, and he's like, well, it's not against the law for me to play my music. He's like, yes, it is. You're blasting your music. You're disturbing the peace. Turn it down. And he's just like, oh, well, did you say something? Oh, oh. You trying to talk to me? And I'm just like, see, you are really asking for Lucius to beat your ass. And I would have been so here for him to punch Randall in his damn face because Randall was just doing the most. So he turns his shit down, and he's like, look, I don't know what your problem is, but you need to leave Alex alone, and you need to stop all this crazy shit that you're doing. And Randall's like, well, huh, well, I mean, of course you will protect her. I mean, after all, you're her baby daddy. He's like, that's not my kid. He's like, oh, really? Well, uh, you see me that you want to go protect her and, you know, all of a sudden, you know, seem like everything she does is right and all this shit. And next thing you know, Lucian really starts going in on damn Randall. He's like, look, look, fool. You cheated on your wife, and yet you still have no remorse or repercussions for the, all the crap that you have done. You're a sociopath, is what you are. Ding, ding, ding. Yes, he is. He's like, well, yeah, I probably am. And he's like, they almost hung you by your neck. And literally hung you by a tree, and yet you're still doing bullshit? He's like, well, yeah, because all that did would just make me even more pissed off. So Lucian lets him know, leave Kelly, well, um, no, he's pretty much lets him know, leave Alex alone. And he's like, well, what are you going to do? He's like, you don't want to find out. Leave her alone. Stop the bullshit. Stop harassing her and leave her alone. So then he goes in to talk to Alex. And while he's in there talking to Alex, Tell me why the hell this dumb son of a bitch texts Natalie, oh, your man is down at Allie's house. And her being completely off, the, off, off her, you know, completely due to the fact that she had already heard this crap from, um, from Justice. And now she getting, now this fool Randall is hitting her up. And you know she can't stand Randall. Y'all remember back in the day when she, when he was in the hospital, she was slashing him up with that razor. She can't stand this crazy ass. So he texts her up and let him know that he's up in the house talking to Alex. But inside, but inside um, Alex's house, Lucian is pretty much, you know, making sure that she's okay. And then she brings up the fact that, do you think I can get in trouble because, you know, um, because Randall is holding this thing against me, saying that I use my, that I got my parents, you know, to, um, to attack him. And Lucian asks, did you? He's like, well, somewhat. She's like, ain't no somewhat. Did you or did you not bring your, you know, have your parents come in and attack him? And she said, yes. And she says that, yeah, you can go to, you can definitely, you know, go to jail for this. You know, this is, I mean, yeah, even though they both are dead and it's over, yeah, if he want to file power charges against you, he can. And, he, and she's saying that I know he's holding that over my head. And, and like, Lucian's like, Man, if he was going to do that crap, he would have done it already. I already got him under the control. Little do you know, that crazy son of a bitch is already, stewing some, is already brewing some more shit. Because the next thing you know, Kelly, um, Natalie finally comes out, and he's like, uh, you might want to go in there. Look, you know, your man in there with Alice right now. You should go see. Go see. And then the next thing you know, we just see that, you know... Natalie's heart like literally jumped out her chest because she's now beginning to feed into Randall's bullshit that um, that he's cheating on her with Alex. Just goes to show you how people can create mess and you believe the bullshit. And that part was just crazy. So that's where it ended, you know, ended in front of the house, and she's telling Randall to shut up, she's like, you can go over there, he's in there with that whore right now, she's like, shut up, Randall, 
Like, it's random. Random really needs to be put in a straitjacket for real. Because leaving him out in public, people are in danger and lives are at stake. Because this fool would do... You, you, I mean, Randall's not predictable. You don't know what you're going to get from this fool. I mean, to tell you the truth, he's, in some ways, he's just as much as dangerous as Eddie's ass. But yeah, like, when Psycho Betty was doing the most this damn episode, she playing her fucking music and dancing and shit, and it's late at fucking night. Like, dude, you lucky somebody to come out there with a gun and, and like, decided to blow your brains out doing all that messy shit. Like, you just doing the most trying to go after Alex because, for one, Alex don't want your ass. And one, you know, and, and plus we know that that baby's Randall's. But, again, I think that nurse is the one who switched that DNA to get Randall off her back. But little does she know, it just made Randall more of an asshole than he really is. You know, well, actually more of an asshole than he actually is. That's what I meant to say. But yeah, that's what I have, y'all. But um, if I, you know, missed anything, correct me down in those comments. I love to hear from you, and also I can hear your take on this episode because certain things are, are coming together. We're starting to see that yeah, Ian could possibly get Kelly out. But if more evidence comes in, and we know that Travis got a whole bunch of church minions working for him, so I'm pretty sure there might be some more stuff that he, that they, that's going to come out against Kelly. So we just have to keep our eyes open. But uh, that's what I have. So um, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you can get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, I started to go fund me, so check out that link in the description box. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And I'll be back with the next episode of Loving You Is Wrong. So until then, everybody, take care.